Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the Solomon Hologram Binding. I rode this binding at Arapaho Basin on an overcast with low to high visibility day. There was like heavy snow, chunder, ice, fresh pow, kind of just a mix of all spring-like conditions, and I rode it on my K2 Cool Bean with my K2 Thraxxus boots. All right, for adjustability, you've got twist cams on the toe and the heel strap to lengthen or shorten them. You got a set screw at the bottom of the chassis to adjust the forward lean on the high back as well as the placement of how it sits inside that heel cup in there. And then you've also got your toe ramp that you can slide forward or backwards. There are push pins on the toe strap but they don't seem to actually have any more placement. They're just there so you can push down and put a new one in if you break it. With the heel strap, you've got this outer cage out there that's very minimal and then a thin layer of foam in there. This just really allows the strap to rely on the instep of the boot to provide the padding. It is designed so that it contours well. You don't really notice any hot spots. It feels secure, but it doesn't feel so rigid that it's like clamping down or creating any pinch points. The toe strap, soft and malleable. There is a slit through the middle. This will fit most boot shapes. I have a pointy nose boot. It does a great job of going over that and feeling secure. Overall, the straps are very minimal in their design, but they're very functional. What I like about these ratchets is how big they are. You just got an immense ratchet to really just torque down on it and it just feels like it's easier to get it to climb. Now with that said, I did have some minor sticking issues with this that caused me to be a little bit powerful. These were sampled and they were relatively new so they might not have broken in. So be aware when you do get a new one that maybe you need to break it in a little bit, but overall, but overall, they did what they needed to do. My one gripe, there's no release tab on the toe strap ratchet. I mean, just make them uniform. Put the goddamn tab on there so I don't have to grab it from the front. Sometimes you end up fumbling around in there. But overall, they climb well, they stay secure. The ratchets, they do what you need them to do. With the high back, I felt that you could actually feel this inside the shadow fit. It was playful where you needed it, but could be powerful when you had to drive into it. You do adjust it down on the bottom of the chassis to get it to sit in there how you want, whether you're doing high back rotation or forward lean. These did have a little bit more forward lean set on them, which is fine because you do get that play from the shadow fit in the heel cup back there. So, you know, be aware of that, but for a freestyle binding, it was good because it did give me that power where I absolutely needed it when I was just driving into my heel side edge. All right, so this is a freestyle binding. It's a little bit softer and it does have shadow fit, which gives you a lot more lateral play because that heel cup actually moves when you drive into it. You can feel that in there. And I know someone's gonna be like, blah, blah, blah. I never feel it move, blah, blah, blah. You're fucking wrong, okay. Let me explain something to you. You're probably in a boot that's too big and your foot's already flopping around in there. When you're actually in a properly sized boot and you actually drive into the heel, you notice that there's a little more lateral play and there's a little more give in that heel. That just allows you as the rider to mimic the movements of a skateboarder or surfboard rider that's just moving their heels around to set up into a turn. It gives you a more surfy feel in the binding and it allows you to just have more lateral play and roll in there so that it changes how you actually press the board as well as drive it. I noticed it. I ride a lot. I ride a rigid heel cup. So when I'm on something like this, I notice these things. It's not a bad thing, but you do notice that you got that play in there. Now with the toe to heel flex in this, there's a little bit more power. It's a little more standard in there. The straps and everything do give you that drive. Overall, it's a middle of the road park binding. Overall, the ride of this binding can best be described as surfy powerful. So what you get is more lateral play. You can just sort of over exaggerate your movements when you're pressing the board or driving into the heel and you just do that. But when you need to push down into the edge, you notice that power coming down through the toe or the heel. Who's this binding for? The freestyle rider with a skateboard background. So overall, these ride how you'd expect. More lateral flex, you get a little bit more play in the heel cup. You got that drive down in the toe and the heel if you really push into the heel and the toe as well. Overall, it's a little bit more surfy and playful binding. It's personally not for me, but it's not a bad binding by any means. Comparable bindings. 
the Union Strata, the K2 lineup, the Rome Vice. This has been my review of the Solomon Hologram. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own a pair? Are you going to buy a pair? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this binding. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I'm not. I've got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.